Hello, YouTube viewers. Once again, welcome to the depression. This is Discovery World Channel. I thank you for your comments and also your contribution for making this energy channel a success. For some time now, we have been on how you can build a free energy generator and different components you can use in building this system. And I last week production I explained in details how to build a 10 kV SF generator, and I also made mention of different components using the comment which I have saved last week. We talked about a comment is what I used last week. I was able to explain what type of automator electric motor. Uh, good for uh, for the generator. This is a that was asked by one Mr. Jones. Uh, Jones. He asked this question, and I was able to explain a uh, different details of how you can build this system. How you was he asking the type of alternator and electric motor you will use to build the system, and because of that, I had to go ahead and explain. In different components, I also mentioned this uh, uh, the generator, uh, the electric motor, which I say, if you are using, for instance, you are having this kind of type of generator like this, and then you will need at least a bigger electric motor, which is at like 1.5 uh, ki uh, kilowatts of electric motor that can also have the power to run this. Because if you have, for instance, have uh, three uh, kVA generator and use this kind of motor, which is 1.5, uh, you are already consume half of your uh, output power, and then you only have only half. And then what if you put electric appliances, just everything is gone. So I recommend that you should use something smaller uh, system for smaller generator then use a bigger electric motor of, of this type for bigger generator so i we have explained and i've done and also give you a sample of this type of generator i say this kind of generator you need this kind of electric motor like 1.5 kva electric motor with a good rpm you can also have a good output so i explain everything then today we are going to go into details also in the continuation of the explanation we made today i'm going to look at this uh, important question because somebody also asked this question in this last uh, uh, question this is mr jackson jackson explain what he asked is that could you please add a page with all the specification including width and dimension of poly size of bed flyway thank you when then today i'm going to have ex a bit a explanation on what he asked because he asked three things he asked one the width the dimension of poly and size of the bed and so let's, let's go for instance now uh jackson i want to explain something to you that is a good example now let's use this uh, generator as example now the weight of your pulley is directly proportional to the size of your motor for instance this is the generator you can see this flyway now the flyway this flyway if you look at this weight of this flyway is directly proportional to the size of the motor because i've discovered that if you use a very weighty uh, flyway on a very light motor like motor that rpm is not too high the speed of the motor will be reduced in other words we are giving more load to the motor to turn rather than giving less weight so i recommend less flyway weight it is not the how weightier the flyway is that make the energy to the, the current to generate 
what made the current to generate is the speed of the motor. The essence for the flyway is only help to keep the energy moving as kinetic energy in the process of changing over. I've explained that in one of my videos. So if you are asking for the weight of the of the motor, I will not give you a specific size of the weight of dimension of pulley. You should use a pulley that you know that is confident, is less weight. The palms will be less because if I give you so use something, I don't know the size of your motor, I don't know the speed ratio of your motor. So if you go and use the specification, you may not likely have the output or good output. Now you are giving, you give a high weight for that. For instance, look at this generator now. This generator does not even use pulley. There's no pulley. All we thing we have here is uh, what the bed, which is being used as a, a joint between this and this. Now, if you observe, this generator also still produce a good output without any uh, problem. Why? Because there is a less weight. The electric motor could be able to turn with a very good ratio and be able to turn at a very good speed without affecting the output. So, if you are friend, if you are giving a much weight to the electric motor, then the turning ratio will be reduced. For, so let's look for instance now. Let's look for instance now. Look at this this now. Look at this now. And this is this is now you can see that this is rotating well. See this the speed. The speed is going. Now if the speed is not high enough, as you see now, the output of the generator will not be high so you must make sure that the speed the motor speed is high and for you to achieve the high motor speed you must reduce too many weights on this on this on this value the weight of the flower should be reduced so that is why you can see this this generator can turn in a very flexible way do you know why because the the weight of the flow is just small. It's just see, it does not even really matter whether you use a very big or use a, a flow. The flow does not only really produce the voltage. What produces the voltage is the generator, and the generator can only produce the voltage if the this engine, which is the grandmaster, which is the heart of the system, is turning well. And this is the electric motor. If the electric motor is not turning well, there is no way you will have a good output so that is where i always tell my subscriber get a fast electric motor electric motor that will give you high speed fast speed then from there you have a good generator output but if you go ahead and get just a uh, just have a flywheel that is heavy and connect here you will not have what you want the output will not be and you affect the pressure ratio so you get it now now let's go back now let's go back and then if you know let me go back to another question you ask here another question you ask here is a, it's a, uh, the dimension of the pulley size of the bed and flyway i've explained that already so i'm going to look at the specification which one you need when you want to get a generator First of all, look at this now. Look at this number. I'm explaining based on the laugh, the question the, the Jackson asked. Now, if you want to buy automator, the first thing you should do is to look at the lab bed of the automator. Every automator, because people have asked me, uh, engineer, what type of automator will I buy? And I asked me another question. I said, no, I don't, I cannot recommend automator to you. Because it is not the company that matters. What matters is the kind of coil they use. I can ask you go and buy a Stanford or buy HP or buy whatever it is. Uh, a GCC, go and buy GCC. At the end, that automator may not give you what you want if the coil they use in producing that automator is not a good copper wire. So, but what now I want you to know. 
in a system or in everything that tells which you have to wash out when you want to buy is to see the label system and that's what I put it here the type the output the hairs that is the hairs the European and the fish every alternator has this configuration this configuration is what make a good alternator so if you go to the type the type now for instance the company you will see it here just have reference sometimes you have the type or you can just go so G is a company so it's the type you can say it is G alternator now you go to the output the output of the alternator which is where you see the V KVA. The KVA determine the output, the alternator output. What is the capacity of the alternator? And we have the KVA. In this case, this one I think is five. It's on this one, this one. So even if I have lost the alternator, I can tell that it's five. In this alternator here, this label is what you see from the, the beginning of the video. But here you see here, the KVA here is 5. Now, the hex. Now, when I'm talking about the, what, the KVA, the KVA and the output system is the same. Don't get confused because people will ask what's different between the KVA and the output. The output is the production ratio of the alternator. What is the, when we talk about the capacity of the alternator, is mean what is the production capacity? What is the output? Okay, what is the output? The output, the the capacity, and sometimes you see the KVA, they are all the same. They are all the same. There's no difference between all this. So you should also know about that. Then the next you're going to look at is the hex. The hex is about is the the speed ratio, the speed, the level, the highest level. I wish the alternator coil can run to give you the output you want. For instance, the output that is here. Now, if you look at very careful at time, you will understand that every alternator carry this hex. Yes, every alternator carry what this hair. Some put some can put it as the RPM. As you can see here, we have RPM. It's RPM. The RPM in this place is 1,500. Have you seen it? 1,500, which is what I put RPM here. The RPM is, we call it the rotational per minute. What the ratio I which the alternator can turn before every minute. Then in this place, you have a CS, which is the hex. Here they put the CS or some some most territory you see as the hairs. Here we have 50, so it's this the maximum speed ratio highest to give you 5 kV is 50. Then we also have the RPM. You know, another area you have to look at it is the phase. Because this is very important. Some people will go and buy three uh, three phase of a meter and they want to use it for house. And when they say well, this is what I have. No, you if you want to have less issue, you go for one 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 phase. This as this one is now, this is one phase on the top. This one phase on the top. They have two phase, we have three phase. So we have three phase, mostly three phase of the top. So you should go for one phase of the top, not three phase. If you want to use three phase of the top, you also need to bring out the cable. I personally I have one phase, I also have three phase. So you can use three phase to bring out output. You can also use one phase, but to avoid some problem in your own side, because the three phase alternator is sometimes used to power some three phase equipment. If you are not using three phase equipment in your house, then why do you have to go for three phase alternator? Just you buy one phase and you get yourself uh, done from the problem. So that is how it is. Now, this is uh, how far. I can go today because of time frame. Next week, we also discuss much about also alternator system. And I want you to understand it because you cannot build energy uh, system without having a good alternator system. We are going to onto multi labeling system 
and other things. So this year, to so start the year, we should be able to produce what will help you to solve your problem. And I also ask you guys to always send comment. And if you have issue on the whatever pressure we made, it's important for you to ask a question in the comment. 